My next recipe takes an often overlooked ingredient and celebrates its beauty in this delicious savory snack. Rather than use the good old button mushroom, I want to find the right fungus for the job. I've heard about a group of lads on the south coast who have developed a highly unusual and eco-friendly way of cultivating mushrooms. Oh, big haul today. Excellent stuff. Instead of using bog-standard compost, they collect the used coffee grounds, which would otherwise go to landfill. Coffee's here, Rob. The mushroom growing process begins with the spawn. The mushroom spawn is always growing. So what you're doing here is just giving it a nice medium for it to grow through. This cement, cement mixer, it may seem a bit strange, but it's actually a really useful way of getting a, ensuring a fine quality mix. And also the mushrooms really do love to grow in coffee grounds. It's very nutritious. The mushrooms that come out of it have got a very deep flavour, very, uh, very earthy. It's got a nice range of nutrients from which to draw upon to make its mushroom. So once the mix is nicely combined, we, uh, we bag it up into these grow bags where it stays for about two to three weeks, during which time the mushroom grows from the seed uh, throughout the coffee grounds. So I then, once that's ready, I then seal the bag and there we have one grow kit. After bagging, the next stage is the fun bit, the growing. Well, this room is basically, it's where, it's where the mushrooms do their thing in the dark. This is the airing cupboard, essentially. We keep this room in the dark because the mushrooms don't need the light to take over the, the, the coffee like this. It's essentially, if they were growing in, inside a natural tree in, in, in its natural environment, they'd, they'd be in the dark. So for this stage, all they need is, is darkness and some coffee. The great thing about these packs is um, it enables people to grow their own mushrooms using the exact same technique that we use to grow the ones that we supply to restaurants. But actually, um, because we use the same technique for the kits as we do for our fresh mushrooms, they grow really quickly. Well, this is the exciting part, because basically, within two weeks, you get your own uh, harvest of mushrooms. So these are pearl oyster mushrooms, which is a, a species of oyster mushrooms. They're, they're actually native to the UK, and like, they grow on uh, trees normally in deadwood. Um, so they grow really well with the coffee, because it has the same sorts of minerals and nutrients for it. But after about a week, tiny little mushrooms come out like this, real mini little ones. They're called pinheads. And you can see they're all perfect little mini mushrooms. This is the end of the first week. Uh, in the second week it is where the kind of fun starts because literally they double in size every single day. These mushrooms are a highly versatile variety which have a velvety skin, firm texture and a rich peppery flavour. You can use them in everything from soups to risottos and, as well as the obvious taste, these fat-free fungi pack a list of health benefits as long as your arm. These are quite different to the mushrooms you tend to get in England. They're not the same as butter mushrooms. These are a lot more gourmet. You can do numerous things with them. They're absolutely they're good to eat as you are. You can just have them raw. I mean, they taste quite nutty and quite, um, quite creamy, and they've just got a really nice, unique flavour. They're great on rustic bread or some like pie crust or something, something a bit crunchy, they have the texture, the difference, it goes really well in your mouth, it's fantastic. You get actually several harvests. The first one's really impressive and it's always beautiful to see the mushrooms growing for the first time. And then after around 10 days, you'd water it again and that just snaps it into action for the second harvest. And then once you've finished harvesting mushrooms from the kit, you're actually left with a really nutrient-rich compost. So once the mushrooms get to this sort of size, they're perfect for harvesting um, and it's really straightforward to harvest. All you do is just take the bouquet, try and get it all off in one go, hold it at the base, give it a little twist. So that's uh, almost the whole bouquet. As they grow on the log themselves, sometimes there's a little bit of coffee residue comes off, so we chop that off just so you're left with nice clean mushrooms. So that's the sort of bit I'm talking about, get rid of that. And then just break these up so you're left with some nice individual mushrooms and you can really see how delicate they are underneath, like the, fr the frills and whatnot, they just look beautiful. They're very versatile mushrooms. Anything you do with normal mushrooms, you can do with these and it will taste better. It seems the caffeine fuel mushroom business is booming, and the real beauty for me is they sell the mushrooms back to the people they got the coffee from in the first place. I can't wait to try something special with these funky fungi. And I'm going to use some of the lads' mushrooms in my savoury shoe bun recipe. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank, Thank you, too. Now, 
Tell me about these different strains of mushroom. They're oyster mushrooms. We've got the pink oyster mushroom and the pearl oyster mushroom. The pink oyster mushrooms, uh, naturally, you'll find it in slightly warmer temperatures, so mm. Mediterranean areas or, or tropical areas. Um, but what, what we've found it works really well is someone's house because it's obviously nice and warm, it doesn't get too cold, so yeah. it, gr it grows great in someone's kitchen or whatever. Yeah. And then the pearl, um, this is a yeah, classic European oyster mushroom. What I'm going to do now is prepare a basic choux pastry, which is what the, the mushroom is going to go into. To make the perfect casing for these magnificent mushrooms, I'm using a choux pastry. It's light and fluffy, and what makes it special is that it doesn't need a raising agent. The steam created in the dough when it's baked does all the work. Now, to start with, I'm going to pop my water in the pan, and the butter goes in the pan. And again, softened butter. So what I'm going to do is cook this out. So I'm going to melt this down to start with. Then we're going to add the, the flour to that, to the butter and water. And this is where you've got to carry on stirring. I think shoe pastry is so versatile. Most people think it's a one-trick pony, but actually making a savoury one. But there's certain techniques you need to use when cooking with shoe, when baking with shoe. It's all about drying out the inside to create something that's got that crunch on the outside, a little bit of softness on the inside. So it's important to keep stirring it at that point rather than let it you do, walk away for you, five minutes. And... Because it's like putting a dry dough in a pan. So you've got heat coming at the bottom and it'll just burn. Yep. So you just keep on moving it, building up that gluten that's in there to form a decent roux or a decent paste. You see it's become quite smooth now, shiny. Yeah, sure. So that roux, I'm happy to take it off the heat now and then begin to crack my eggs in there. Mix that nice and gently to start with, and then mix it all round. Two. That's the fourth egg going in now. Carry on mixing this round. And you're doing it off the heat there? I'm doing it off the heat. It's still got a lot of residue heat in there, you see. Mm -hmm. And then the more you beat it, it comes together as a, as a paste. Now, at that stage, I'm just going to stop for a minute because I'm going to add some thyme. And again, these are savoury shoe buns, so this little addition of thyme should marry up quite well with your mushrooms. I don't want to add too much mm. because the flavour of thyme is quite strong. Yep. And I want to be able to taste your, your mushrooms. And I'll chuck them straight in. Beat this to become nice and glossy. We're nearly there. Look how smooth that's gone now. Leave that to cool slightly, probably for about 10 minutes, and then pop that into a piping bag. I'll put that to one side. You can smell the thyme now as it's getting warm. Because it's warm, it's released really nice, the oils yeah. in there. And what I've got here is the shoe in a piping bag. And then you pipe... ..just dollops of the mixture onto the tray. About the size of golf balls. Preheat your oven to 220 degrees Celsius. Bake the buns for 10 minutes at the centre until risen and golden. Reduce to 190 degrees C for another 30 minutes. Top the buns with sprinklings of parmesan for the last five minutes. There are your puffed up shoe buns, ready to be filled with the lad's mushrooms. Who's going to cook the mushroom? Can you take it, Rubs? Yeah, I'll give it a go. Yeah, I'll give it a go, yeah, yeah. So have you cooked before, then, Rob? Well, actually, before I, before I turned my hand to mushroom farming, I used to work in kitchens all around the place. Right. That's great. But that, I, I don't want to big yeah. myself up too much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I crack on. I was wrong, or... it's, it's on heat now. If you need any wooden spoons, I'll be on you, mate, OK? OK, Stop. cool. Well, hopefully it's all under control. I've done this before, fortunately. Yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> which is a good thing. OK, nice. so just chop up your shallots. Yeah, so I'm just going to chop them up quite finely, just cos um, when they're small, they can uh, coat the mushrooms quite nicely. Yeah. So you don't have a big chunk of onion, a big chunk of mushroom. You've got mushroom and onion. Yeah. Uh, so just chop them up like this. The pan's getting nice and hot. Yeah. I'm going to chuck some butter in there because when you're a mushroom farmer, you need all the calories you can get. I'm going to burn the butter. I just mix this round. We get the oil and the butter nicely mixed and real, real hot. And because like the mushrooms are super delicate, they've got a great flavour on them because they're grown on the coffee. Yeah. And um, and also because you know because they're literally right there growing, and then they're going to go in the pan. They're so fresh that. There's not really any need to do too much to them. Next, Robbie adds some finely chopped garlic. 
you don't have to cut your garlic quite as fast as Robbie. So I've got my mushrooms here. Yeah. I just like to tear them down the middle, keep them quite big, keep them keep their shape, because that's one of the unique things about these mushrooms. The onions are nice and uh, brown now, and the pan's nice and hot, so yeah. I'm just going to chuck them all in. Yeah. Give them a little... How long will you cook, cook them for? Just literally... Two minutes. Two minutes, that's if it? If that, yeah. Just, just to heat them through, because, like I say, the flavour's all in there. Yeah. So you just let them do the talking, really. Robbie's keeping things simple with the mushrooms to make the most of their natural flavour. All it takes is a squeeze of lemon juice, a spot of sherry and a big spoonful of creme fraiche. And then stirring that creme fraiche into the mushrooms. It smells really good. It smells beautiful. Yeah. I get that all. And the sherry's coming up as well. <laughs> Let's have a look. That's grand, that, mate. Yeah. Go and sit down, like Robbie. Cool. Round of applause, Cheers. mate. Well done. Thank you very much. That's good man, uh, spot on there. That's brilliant. I like that. They're beautiful and soft. And I've got a little bit of sauce in there to play with as well. Now I'm going to add some salt, pepper, and some chopped parsley. Stir that together, and I would say that's it. And now, time to fill your shoe buns. These are cooked down beautifully, these mushrooms. They really have. Oh, yes. Now, that for me is a miniature pie. Mm -hmm. Because I've done a very similar one, but much bigger. So you can do a huge shoe bun and just pack it full of mushrooms, cut it and serve it. But they're miniature little pieces of delight. That is the savoury shoe buns cooked by Robbie and me. She really is a versatile pastry, so don't think of it as just eclairs and profiteroles. With a savoury filling like this, they make a proper little pie.